Let's continue with our training on bridge geometry design using Civil 3D and 3DS Max software. You will recall that in part 2B of our training, we successfully completed the entire task by discussing Total Station, GPS and Google Earth. There has been a notable reaction. Engineers from both within and outside our country Tanzania, many of them were from Kenya, Uganda and Zambia whom interacted with this platform. Since our contact made public, we have received numerous messages from engineers, some of which are complimentary, offering advice or posing questions. Furthermore, we've received 189 words of appreciation, 24 helpful suggestions, 127 inquiries and 211 words of thanks. Given that this platform caters to engineers, we want to assure all engineers that we have welcomed their appreciation, suggestions, inquiries and thanks wholeheartedly as they all play a crucial role in fortifying our platform. To those who expressed gratitude and gave commendations, do we extend our heartfelt appreciation. For those who provided suggestions, your input is highly valuable to us and will be instrumental in improving this platform. In relation to the 127 questions, we have sorted and categorized them. It's important to note that the purpose of Part 2A and Part 2B of our training sessions were to gain general understanding of how data can be gathered using different tools. Advanced, basic or even none at all. For instance, an engineer may have tools like a total station, theodolite or a level instrument such as a damp level, along with differential GPS systems like RTK and static. Then there are those who rely on handheld GPS devices or differential GPS units. And for individuals without any specialized equipment, I explained how they could utilize Google Earth effectively to match the capabilities of those with equipment. Questions. I the questions were mostly focused on the accuracy of the processed data, questioning the error margin for each method I described. 2. The advice was largely aligned with the themes of the questions, suggesting, firstly, go a little deeper. Secondly, it say something about GNSS. Third, say something about RTK. And fourth, it's better to use RTK instead of hand GPS because when you use hand GPS, the location tends to be shifted. One of our fellow engineers argued that utilizing a handheld GPS device and GPS visualizer will cause result in coordinate point shifting. So, if you captured your points using a handheld GPS and later converted the data from the geographical system to UTM using the GPS visualizer, be aware that when you begin implementation, the position of the bridge may not be precisely where you expected it to be, instead, you may notice that it has shifted. Let's discuss a little bit on this observation. There are two types of UTM systems in play, one tailored for East Africa, commonly applied in Tanzania and the other a global system used universally. Both go by the name UTM with a 250-meter distinction between them. If you happen to use the East African UTM for planning and later seek your location without recollecting which one you utilized, bear in mind that it will shift the location by 250 meters. Hey engineers, if memory serves me right, the UTM we utilized was ARC 1960 alongside specific zones like 36S and 37N. This is exclusive to East Africa, with numerous surveys and designs adopting this UTM. However, land surveying authorities have urged discontinuation of this method due to increasing confusion in a globally connected world that should ideally operate on a unified language. Hey engineers, if I recall correctly, the UTM we employed was WGS84, Tariff 11, recognized as the global standard. This is the worldwide UTM utilized across borders. Therefore, in our designs, we are advised to use Tariff 11, which is WGS84. Otherwise, your drawings and all information should clearly state which UTM you have used. It's important to acknowledge that variations are bound to exist between individuals utilizing equipment and those who are not. This leads to a clear differentiation between handheld GPS devices, which typically have an error margin of around 3 meters and differential GPS systems, specifically RTK, with an error margin as small as 15 centimeters. While this is undeniably true, it doesn't imply that one cannot function effectively without the necessary tools. Just do something, it is possible. 
It is indeed correct that using advanced GPS technologies like RTK can yield highly precise outcomes, but the associated gear comes at a high cost, roughly five times more expensive than a total station. In our projects, my suggestion for engineers would be to either lease the equipment or engage a surveyor equipped with such tools to carry out tasks with the necessary precision. Otherwise, one cannot attribute failure to complete a design task solely to the absence of RTK equipment. I really wish we could discuss more about RTK, but RTK is a comprehensive topic that could take a lot of our time. However, to clarify this matter, we have written a very good book of over 100 pages that discusses RTK only. It is on its way to being published. We have sought the easiest way for every engineer to access it, so it will be sold as a soft copy, I mean ebook, and will distribute it on the Amazon platform so that every engineer, both within the country and internationally, can obtain it without any difficulty. Our book explores how engineers, surveyors, and technical professionals can use real-time kinematics, RTK, for collecting terrain data with exceptional precision in geographical and elevation details. It explains the steps involved in setting up RTK and utilizing it to obtain the most accurate terrain data compared to other surveying methods or tools. The main focus of the book revolves around the application of RTK in engineering and agricultural projects during the design and construction phases. It offers detailed insights into deploying RTK in highway or road projects, hydropower projects, irrigation projects, and landfill projects during the design and construction processes. Additionally, it presents various case studies of significant projects that utilized RTK, showcasing its effectiveness in delivering outstanding outcomes. This publication serves as a valuable reference for students studying civil engineering, educators, as well as practicing civil engineers who wish to enhance their knowledge and expertise. In addition to the details related to the book, it should be understood that both handheld GPS and RTK are types of GNSS and receive automatic signals from satellites, while a total station is not a part or type of GNSS and does not use satellites at all but is manual operating equipment under EDM. The development of Global Navigation Satellite Systems GNSS, such as the United States Global Positioning System GPS, Russia's GLONASS, the European Union's Galileo and China's BEDO, has revolutionized the collection of terrain data by providing a global framework for precise positioning and navigation. The introduction of GNSS technology has allowed for continuous and accurate worldwide coverage, bringing unprecedented levels of accuracy and reliability to positioning and mapping. This flowchart illustrating the different methods used in GNSS Global Navigation Satellite System positioning with a particular focus on RTK real-time kinematic and its subdivisions. Let me explain these concepts to you. Let's take a look on RTK real-time kinematic. RTK is a technique utilized to enhance the precision of position data obtained from satellite-based positioning systems. It employs measurements of the phase of the signal's carrier wave along with the information content of the signal and relies on either a single reference station or interconnected stations that provide real-time corrections. This allows for achieving accuracy at the centimeter level. Within RTK, there are subdivisions as indicated in the flowchart. Let's take a look on standard slash single base RTK. This refers to the traditional setup where a single base station provides differential corrections to a mobile rover. The accuracy of this method is highly dependent on the distance between the rover and the base station. As they move further apart, it tends to result in less accurate corrections. Let's take a look on a network RTK, CORS. CORS stands for Continuously Operating Reference Stations. Network RTK utilizes multiple reference stations working collaboratively over an extensive area to create a more robust and accurate positioning system. These reference stations collectively provide correction data that significantly enhances positional accuracy for GNSS receivers within their coverage area. Let's take a look on PPP RTK, which stands for Precise Point Positioning with Real-Time Kinematics, combines the advantages of both PPP and RTK to offer accurate positioning without the need for a nearby base station. By utilizing precise orbit and clock data along with real-time capabilities, PPP RTK aims to provide RTK-level accuracy while also offering a larger coverage area. 
In the realm of GNSS positioning methods, RTK falls under the category of relative positioning. Relative positioning can further be divided into two methods. One, phase observation. This method involves measuring the fractional phase of the GNSS signal carrier wave. Phase measurements are more precise than code measurements and allow for a more accurate determination of distances between GNSS satellites and receivers. However, resolving the integer ambiguity with the unknown number of full wavelengths between the satellite and receiver is necessary in this method. 2. Code observation. This method utilizes the pseudorandom code transmitted by GNSS satellites to measure signal time delay, which translates. Advantages and limitations of RTK. One major benefit of RTK positioning is its ability to provide highly accurate real-time measurements. This makes it incredibly valuable for various applications that require precise data, such as land surveying, precision agriculture, and infrastructure construction. However, it's important to note that RTK does have some limitations. These include the requirement for a clear line of sight to an adequate number of GNSS satellites and the need to stay relatively close to the base station in order to maintain the accuracy of corrections. Better to note that the principles behind RTK positioning represent a significant advancement in collecting geospatial data with enhanced accuracy and reliability. By utilizing the advanced capabilities of GNSS systems and making precise carrier phase measurements, RTK technology offers unmatched precision for real-time positioning. Understanding these principles is vital for those who wish to incorporate RTK technology into their work, as it opens up new possibilities for increased efficiency and accuracy across a wide range of applications. Let's talk a bit about the distinctions between real-time kinematic, RTK, GPS and Google Earth. RTK GPS and Google Earth serve different purposes when it comes to determining geographical positions and elevations. RTK GPS excels in providing highly accurate positioning and elevation data, often achieving precision at the centimeter level. It utilizes both a fixed base station and a mobile receiver to correct errors in GPS signals caused by atmospheric conditions, resulting in extremely precise measurements. Furthermore, RTK technology can be costly due to the specialized equipment required, such as the base station and receivers. Additionally, RTK GPS offers real-time data capture, which is essential for applications that demand immediate and accurate measurements like construction, surveying, and agriculture. On the other hand, Google Earth offers a lower degree of accuracy compared to RTK GPS. While it serves well for general navigation and visualization purposes, its elevation and positioning data obtained from satellite imagery and aerial photos may not be precise enough for applications that require exact measurements. Moreover, Google Earth is freely accessible to the public, making it an economical solution for accessing geographical information. However, if you are looking for more advanced options or better quality images, there could be additional charges. Also, keep in mind that the information on Google Earth may not always be current since it relies on when the satellite pictures and aerial photos were captured. This delay can impact the precision of details for areas that are changing quickly. Google Earth is easy to use and doesn't need any special expertise or tools to view GPS and elevation data worldwide, making it accessible to a broad range of users. I think that's enough for today in terms of responding to the questions asked and hints about RTK, but I advise you to look for the book I mentioned, as there you will find a lot more about RTK. Please let's meet in the continuation of our course as usual for the next step. Yeah.